Hey guys, remember this thing? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe some of you have been watching for for a while. I may remember I made a repair of this here. This guy started to peel up this way. And so um, what I did is I ended up cutting it and laying it back down. And it worked. It's held up good so far. Uh, although they must have broken a tooth off and it just smeared the bottom end of that pocket. But that's not the real issue. The real issue is this guy over here. Look at that. He just peeled that guy right up like an onion. And it broke up. Ended up breaking in there, right next to the pocket. And he just peeled that guy up, started ramping up like a ramp for Evil Knievel. So uh, we're in the same situation as I was last time. So I, I don't know if I'm going to try to attempt that again, but I just might. I might be able to cut some clearance in here with a torch and start to fold it back. Uh, I'm a little concerned because this is starting to wear a little thin, but maybe it'll hold for just a little bit longer to get that, that uh, job finished up. And you wonder, like, wow, why in the world is it doing that? Well, let me show you. Here's a quick video of the, the rock that they're drilling in. So check this out. Isn't that pretty crazy? That is some hard rock. They're doing a lot of crowd, which means a down pressure, and very slow. It turns out they're running into layers of dolomite and layers of flint. So this happens. So anyway, that's that's what happens, right? And it just starts to really beat on these augers. And those machines are so strong that they'll just push and push and push, and you won't even know until you pull the auger out of the hole and you've got a big problem so that's what happened so now it's here <laughs> with me so we're gonna i guess try to do the same type of setup and try and cut some relief in here roll that back down and see how close we can get to the original uh, dimensions because it's getting close to having to be rebuilt again so we'll give it a shot and see if that uh, that'll hold off i mean or hold until the job is done and it'll hold till it breaks as i've said before so it held until it broke and here we are so let's get after it all right so for this portion of the cutting i'm going to try using the plasma cutter it's an 85 amp tip I'm actually just going to cut it off and then uh, reposition it so to make it a little bit easier that way I can bevel this this piece um, better and prepare that edge better and same thing with here I just repair the both ends and just put it back where it's supposed to go oh here we go Well, that was easy enough. Let me get 
And this piece here, you can see where it broke right in there. And I guess I just have to fill all that with weld once I prepare it. But now I can prepare this here, uh, bevel it the way I'd like, and then just glue it all back together. So here we go.
Okay, so that cleaned up all right. Now I'm just going to hit it with a needle scaler. I get asked all the time what needle scaler I use. And uh, this one's just a one off of Lowe's. I like the longer barrel versions. They seem to hit harder. And this is just an attachment you get from Northern Tool or Harbor Freight. Uh, different places have them, so work pretty good. Sometimes I'm able to clean a lot of these things up without needing to do any grinding. So like in this case here, other than this miscellaneous dirt here, this edge is pretty much ready to, to weld. Very little you know, slag is left over. Uh, I will have to make some uh, repairs here, which is separate. But as far as for cleanup for welding, needle skiller does really good. All right, so I got it all cleaned up and got it as close as it's gonna get. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I'm going to go ahead and tack it in place, kind of get it at least close and try and point the teeth where they go, uh, more or less at least, and go from there. Okay, that looks to be all right there. The teeth seem to be pointing in a good direction. The measurements come out good, except for this problem right there. That is a huge gap. Turns out what was happening is that the crack that originally started just went all the way across, kind of in a weird wavy pattern. So that is no good. Uh, so I'm going to add a filler here and add a hundred percent weld here and put it snug over here so it'll weld around the perimeter of this pocket like you would a normal replacement of a pocket or one of these so that way that can be easier to take off the next time uh, i could have put i could also put a piece around and that might work as well maybe like a piece of three quarter inch or seven eighths round something in here that way i can get a real good penetration on this side and this side but I'll just have to see because that that is a big big gap um, I, there's no way of avoiding the way it tore so I gotta fix it best I can for what it is so let me tack that up a little bit better that way it holds in place and put a filler piece Okay, so I welded that side up. That'll work. Okay. And uh, now I need to turn it over. 
and get the bottom side that way I can, can see the cracks or any other cracks that are forming it's a lot of turning over and over but uh, we'll get it done oh no my phone's ringing so next step Okay, so that uh, video taping of what I just did here did not work out as smoothly as I thought. I thought I would leave the welding lens on and kind of show you the, the way I was cutting this. But turns out I may have to show you again here in a minute on the next side. But either way, this is about as clean as I'll get it. No slag, no 
no real uh, burrs or inclusions. This here, I ran into a little bit of a corner. I'm trying to find my pencil. This area right here, it's actually the side of this pocket. And this is weld build up. And so the pocket will lay right in this area. And I'll have a, a bevel right in here to fill it in. And this will have its own natural bevel because of this radius. So I'll put the pocket back on and make sure it's pointed out to the correct to the correct point at the tip of the tooth and we'll go from there weld it up but i'll show you the other side a little bit better All right, well, I'll let that warm up just a little bit. Okay, so this should give you a decent vantage point as to how I cut these things off. So you're about that far away, <laughs> it's about eight inches or so. That's about as close as I can get you without throwing sparks back on the lens. So here we go.
that's pretty much the gist of it. Uh, you start cutting to where you see the separation line between the parent metal and the pocket. <clears throat> so now it's a little quick cleanup with the needle scaler and then fine tune the rest. So if you kind of look closely, you can see the area where there is a weld right in here. But this is the parent metal of the auger flighting. Same thing here. This is a little bit of weld down here. I will take care of that. And what I'll do is put a little bevel right in here and here and cut this off right in here. That way when I flip it over, I can put a nice little weld. There we go. Lot of dirt trapped in there. Okay, so that's about it. <clears throat> Doesn't look the prettiest, I guess. That's about as good as it's gonna get, and that's as good as I'm gonna do it. So anyway, that's a pretty clean, that's a pretty clean uh, cut to say. The pocket will fit on there real nicely, and being that there's no slag or no no uh, real trouble spots, it'll weld fine. You know, could I grind that smooth? Sure, but does it make a real a real big difference? Not really. Uh, the needle scaler got rid of all the little mill scale from the torch and was able to get uh, it clean enough to weld. So that's all we needed to do. And it will hold. So now let's uh, put that back on, that pocket back on. Working off a ladder on these tall loggers is always fun. Uh, not really. But again, that's what they call it work. See how easy this goes back in place if you cut it off right. 
seems to work out really well. So, not bad. You know, the trick is to not cutting into the parent metal because then that just throws you all off. But if you're able to at least find the, diff the separation line between the two pieces, then you can have a little bit better shot of uh, putting it back where it came off of. Then it's just a matter of pointing these guys out just a little bit to get the same measurement. Just like that. See? Okay, so I'm gonna show you the the way it fits. Okay. It's pretty close right there. Back to the original spot. I don't know what it looks like over here, but we can fill that in. So it looks good. Now I'm just weld it up. Alright. Okay, so I know some of you noticed me using this uh, round rod as a filler and people may not like it, but let me explain. So here, I made a little drawing of how two different ways you can go about it and the reasons I went ahead and accepted this form of filler. A lot of times what happens is a person will put in a piece of filler and then we'll only weld this area in here and here, these spots here, which leaves a tremendous amount of open space that is not welded. But in this case, the filler rod was smaller than the opening, which allowed me to weld 100% all the way through here and in there. So effectively making that a good, a good uh, fill-in piece. I was able to almost have an open root weld and the same thing with this other side as a filler. So, you know, I've seen people use bolts and use pieces of rebar and things of that nature. And when done properly, it could be used as a good fill piece. But then when, like I mentioned here, if it's too tight, then they just get a little bridge, almost like a band-aid type of weld and it just won't hold. So here, fortunately, I was able to fill in that whole area and it worked out. So this will be definitely putting it to the test because they are really having difficulties with this rock. So anyway, just thought I'd pass that along in case uh, some of the internet inspectors or the armchair inspectors are complaining, <laughs> which is fine, right? Each just has their own opinion. All right, keep moving.
So now that I flipped this over, you can kind of see the preparation there. I, I did that bevel and the same thing over here. It, it fits all right, you know, so over here, kind of the same situation. And we can see that uh, it kind of cut into this weld. There's a lot of weld there, but that's okay. I'm gonna hold there and put a weld pass in there and that should work. So this is the side that we straightened out. So that'll do it. Run a couple passes there and we should be done. All right. Okay, just so you know, I switched over to stick welding because there's a lot of wind today and I ended up with some situations where you had a lot of pinholes show up. So stick welding never fails. All right, so got done. Just a few passes here and there. Uh, pretty simple, straightforward. Oh, my camera stand right here, <laughs> but uh, I didn't brush that off. Oh well, but uh, you get the gist of that. So another repair out the door. So thank you guys for watching and I uh, hope you guys learned something from that. We'll catch you guys later.